Hi all, I've got another excellent game of Vera Menchik, this time against Max Erver, played in the Hastings Tournament of 1931. Vera Menchik uh, was one of the greatest women's world champions in history. She won the first eight consecutive championships, scoring plus 78, so winning 78 of them, losing just one game and drawing just four. Uh, she, was, she was doing basically everything the other top players did, exhibitions, uh, tours, and she played against you know some of the strongest uh, players around. So Max Erver, obviously one of the official world champions, men world world champions, to play him in 1931. Uh, let's see this game. Uh, it's interesting from an evolution of style perspective also it helps us understand you know why is women's chess today segregated when it was clear even in, in those times there, there were women players that could hold their own uh, to the strongest men players of the time and Fide wasn't exactly giving her a great deal when she won uh, the world championship to have to sort of um, win it uh, through the process that the other challengers had instead of just waiting to be challenged by the winners of the challengers. So it seems Fide wasn't giving uh, Vera such an easy ride, but despite that, uh, you know, to win eight consecutive championships, it's just an amazing achievement. So anyway, this game against Max Erva, D4 from Vera, D5 from Max. If I say first names, it's not because I'm trying to be disrespectful or overly casual it's it's just easier so and that applies to both players by the way so c4 c6 the slav defense knight f3 knight f6 and now viramenchik plays knight c3 that's the most common move and usually e6 is the most popular here max over played d takes and white usually plays according to my life but a4 here and that's actually what was played Discouraging b5, bishop f5, e3, standard stuff so, so far. Here in my live book, e6 is the most popular, over 4,000 games of this. Another move, much rarer, 42 games of bishop d3. That seems rather cheeky <laughs> as a move. There's knight bd7, um, and there's, what was played here was quite rare, knight a6. So it looks as though there's a celebration going on of this d3 square already but it's going to be taken off uh, surely you'd think but there's also this idea that knight c2 so if it's taken off what about knight b4 is this uh, dangerous well after bishop takes c4 knight b4 was played but white can just castle here and white does that actually though in this position you might be surprised here that a lot of players with white have got 120 games with knight e5 not castling and so let's see what happens here for those interested if knight c2 check here can you see what white can play <laughs> this is a very naughty uh, trap actually and if i gave you 10 seconds in this position what would you play as white Okay, not too hard because knight e5 did actually look at f7, just taking here. <laughs> so that would be a disaster. So white can actually just play knight e5, looking at knight takes f7. Sorry, bishop takes f7 is mate here. But, um, you yeah, know, Vera's move has been played a lot. Castling. Okay, so what justification has this uh, knight a6 to b4? Well,. I guess the knight is difficult to challenge there. It is a kind of weak square in white's camp. Black continues now e6. And now we see knight e5. And it's meant to be uh, about equal here. We see bishop d6, queen e2. Now in this position, uh, according to live, but knight c2 is actually played here the most frequently 33 times. Or well, there's h6, or the knight actually coming to d5. That makes use of the knight. Uh, so it's interesting now. This next move is going off the beaten path quite a bit, and it seems a bit on the risky side, indeed. But just to give you an idea of what is happening here, um, 
if black black plays c5, that if black actually plays uh, castling, I'm going to pull on the kibitzer. I have prepared some variations earlier as well, but I just want to make sure e4 is a strong move in this position. Uh, the bishop hasn't got the g4 square. And if it goes back, then white forcibly just plays knight takes after hg e5, winning a piece. Uh, this is why I'm questioning under some scrutiny this knight a6 to b4. I was just curious myself. Um, this doesn't look uh, totally right. And also Vera's move sequence actually is, is interesting here with knight e5. You can see now that queen e2 might actually it might actually be useful uh, for black to play just simply bishop g4, lose another tempo, just to pin the knight and get out of the way. So the move order is quite, uh, it seems accurate, very accurate to play knight e5. And now after bishop d6, this queen e2. So apparently in this position, uh, this has been played hitting the rook. Uh, with a continuation like this, knight d5. So this gets out without the way of tactical trouble, it seems. And the game could, you know, carry on a bit like this, for example. And it's it's still it's a bit better for white. It's slight advantage to white according to to the engines. So anyway, this move c5. It seems a bit risky because, well, it might isolate white's queen's pawn. But what about this check, which is played? Knight c6 is not attractive eggs of knight takes c6. Um, so the king, okay, perhaps should go to f8. Actually, that seems to be the most accurate according to my engines here, where white is still doing uh, very nicely. e4, say, and bishop f4. And in this position, for example, c takes, there's knight d7 check. So there's some dangers in the black position. The bishop on b5 is actually quite useful tactically sometimes. So this, this could lead to an advantage for white, this sort of thing. Uh, but the king actually went to e7. I think this is this is technically worse now. e4, bishop g6. Uh, it seems to be going luring white to try and win material. But there's something really ingenious about to happen here. You know, you might think as, as Max Erver lost his marbles in this game, why is he allowing this knight takes an e5 mechanism still? Well, the key difference is the rook is on h8. It's pointing at h2 here. So this could be a bit double-edged. There's double-edged sword trying to win material like this. But is it? Knight takes g6, hg. And now Vera does play e5. It looks the most tempting move. Why not, you might think? So we have c takes d4. And here is the point. This is... A really amazing move now from Vera Menchik, which does show there's something very special uh, about her. What would you play here with the white pieces if I give you 10 seconds starting from now? Okay, she's not tempted by taking here or here. It's just too dangerous. If e takes, then we point immediately at h2, threatening a mate in one. After g3, uh, in this position, black apparently, no, doesn't take here. Uh, this, this would be good for white because we've got this diagonal, for example. That, that's too dangerous. You know, knight, knight b5, not bishop a3. But black can just kick this bishop. So let's say it goes back to c4. Uh, and a move like queen c6. Now, and what is white doing? If the knight goes back, rook takes h2. Look at this. It's just illustrating some of the pitfalls of this position. You, you don't want this. This is slaughter time. Uh, on h1, and if the bishop went, let's let's put the bishop on d3. Then that's a disaster. D takes. So where does the bishop actually go uh, after a6? It hasn't got any squares over here. So c4, d3. You can see this is like a very well contrived trap. I think Max Over said um, in in his encounters with Vera later. Uh, he was very surprised how much Vera saw 
in, in the positions. Uh, so this this looks incredible. That um, uh, a6, it's it's cast doubt on White's position, not taking on c3. Um, now, if we had taken this way, e takes f, then apparently the engine suggests Black's okay with King f8. Again, we've got this h file dynamic. It's giving Black counterplay activity, and you don't really want to do that with Max Erba. <laughs> if we play f takes materialistically, King takes, and we try and defend the King. Again, you know, Black's going to be fine. Just takes his piece back, and now Knight d5, and that's that's uh, it's not much of a big deal. We can try and use these dark squares, Queen f6. It's okay for Black. So Vera's move, I think, is fantastically strong here in Rook d1. I'll describe it as a very, very strong move in the circumstance. Uh, not falling for this, not giving Black uh, counterplay uh, as much as what she could have given there. And now uh, the bishop drops back. If d takes c3, this does look to be asking for for trouble with rook takes d6. And now, for example, again, white can use this key diagonal here with the bishop with the king on e7. Uh, that's that's a big problem with the position. And white is just doing fantastically well. So bishop a3 here, it's a crushing position. Uh, so the bishop actually dropped back to c7. And Vera now does take a piece under much better circumstances with this uh, pressure on the cent in the center. E takes, G takes, yes, she's a piece up. It's given as about plus two, not plus three though, plus 2.2. G3, defending the H file. Can Max generate can counterplay here? Well, he moves A6 to keep the bishop. So the bishop doesn't move actually for the moment. Vera instead plays another very, very strong move in this position. I wonder if you can guess it, if I gave you 10 seconds now, if you want to pause the video. And actually the engine really likes this as well, this next move. Okay, Vera plays bishop e3. So what would happen on a takes b, you're wondering? If a takes b, that wasn't played. Bishop takes d4 with numerous threats, principally bishop c5 to win the queen. Uh, if what, what does black uh, do? If king e8, bishop c5 again, queen moves, we can just take this. White's doing really well here. King's stranded. So if the bishop had moved, Instead, if we've moved that bishop c4 instead. This isn't a strong, but it's still okay actually for white. It's still good for white. But bishop e3, even stronger, very strong move. Bishop b6, protecting d4. And now bishop c4 was played. Technically, it seems possible that rook takes d4 is viable here. Bishop takes. Rook d1, and this is strong as well, technically, with the same sort of ideas. But uh, bishop c4 is good as well. King moves, knight e4, king g7. Okay, white's a piece up, but how easy is it going to be to consolidate this? Rook a c1, rook h5. Black is trying to play energetically. Bishop f4. Now e5. So this structure does look as though it's quite solid. This is going to take some um, some undermining. G4 kicking the rook. The rook moves. And now bishop G3. Keeping the possibility of G5 immediately would undermine the whole structure straight off. And uh, against this, I think queen E7 now was played. Let's see, G5 here could still be quite useful or not. Well, F takes and black is defending E5, so it's not really that clear. Um, the engine suggests bishop takes f7. I'm not convinced by this. Knight takes g5. Check. Okay, white could be a little bit better there. But um, yeah, actually, the more we look at this, king g7, it looks as though this is quite devastating as well. 
this kind of continuation. If queen takes, there's uh, bishop f4. Okay, so g5 might have been actually possible here. Uh, there's also another way, just simply knight takes f6. It looks more simple. So if queen takes, there's bishop takes e5. If king takes g5 check, queen takes e5, and in this position, uh, say here, bishop takes, rook takes, bishop takes f7 or a5, and white is doing very, very well. Okay, so there, there does seem to be a combinative solution here in a, in uh, with the extra piece after queen e7. Uh, but Vera played knight d2. Maybe this is in light of that bit on the passive side. Knight d2, rook h e8, queen e4. White does have a grip though on all the light squares here. So as long as this blockade can be maintained, uh, as long as black's not activating his position, it should be okay. So queen d7, knight f3, and this actually prepares a nice blockading maneuver potentially knight in knight e1 to d3 queen c6 vera takes the queen off bishop d5 rook a c8 bishop e4 keeping a, a strong light square blockade against f5 as well if uh, this wasn't played so carefully i think f5 could potentially be quite promising at the moment though there's, there's a lot of pressure on e5 and c6 but uh, bishop e4 Rook c7. Now this nice blockade on d3, knight e1. So nice positional moves, a piece up. Rook e c8, knight d3. Knight e7, a pair of rooks come off. Another king comes in, king f1. Rook c4, swapping basically b7 for a4 to do this active rook move. So bishop takes b7, rook takes a4. But white seizes that c file, so white's getting another positional trump card here on move 36. Uh, another possibility though, that does seem lucrative, but there's also g5 in this position to try and break black's structure as well. Uh, this this does seem uh, quite dangerous to play g5, or f4 is another way to try and just break the structure down. But rook c1 maintains advantage as well. Black tries to clamp down on these possibilities, g5 and f4, by playing g5. So a little bit of work is needed still for white. f3. Rook a2, the rook is not really attacking anything, the knight's defending b2, bishop e1, and this looks as though the bishop is going to trap potentially this rook, and also then that would put a6 under scrutiny, so a5 stops bishop b4, bishop d2, still white now can pre prepare moves like this, f5 is played, G takes a4. This is a bit desperate now for black. If knight takes f5, bishop d5, where is the rook going? It's actually pretty stranded. If rook a4, we can just play this winning the exchange. Rook b4 would be forced. So this is a very desperate position now. Uh, so a4, black can resign. It's like plus five now, technically. Uh, king moves a3, b4 is played. King f6, bishop a6, as though the bishop is going to be attacking the rook soon to win that exchange. g4, bishop c4, rook takes, king takes. So basically a whole rook up now, but has black got space invader pawns after g takes? Let's see, knight c5 keeps the lock on e4, king takes, so it's our murder of pawns, has it got potential? Bishop takes f7, bishop d8. Check, king f6, bishop g4. Nope, they seem to be dropping off these, these pawns. Knight d5, that's taken. Knight takes b4, bishop e4 again, another blockade on the light squares. Bishop e7, knight d3. Yes, it is a whole rook up. Knight a2, check. And now the black king is getting into trouble in any case. Uh, it's it is a rook down so check 
Knight takes e5. After knight c3, white plays king d3, and now Max resigns here. Uh, let's see, if he had played on with a2, this looks as though it might be dangerous. There's rook g4 check, and if king here, that's a mating two after check and knight f3. And if king h5, then check. And in this position, rook g1 will do. Also, there's bishop f7. Uh, which if queening check and if here bishop g8 is a mate in two so that would actually um, force king h5 and then white could actually get that queen with rook g1 check so anyway so after in, in this continuation, a2 wasn't even tried. If knight takes and then, and then a2, we can just play rook g1. That's that's easy enough. And just collect this pawn, actually, before it does anything. Uh, so, OK, the, ti the timing of the resignation was not um, premature or anything. So um, I think simplest, actually, is no, not uh, I think rook g1 is actually even possible as well because knight b1 the black king is getting in trouble although the pawn's queening here bishop g6 and we've got this mating net here with knight f3 and rook g3 so if we queen here then it's a mating two again knight f3 check and rook g3 or, or indeed there's bishop f5 checkmate so yeah, it does seem as though the a pawn is not offering black salvation. That needs to be you know calculated quite well just to make sure. Uh, so a very fine game uh, from Viramenchik, navigating through all the various little traps and dynamic possibilities. Uh, so an excellent win in the Hastings tournaments of 1931 against Max Over. Okay, comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.